Okay, so let's continue from where we left last time. So we have seen so far um, that we can remove uh, the divergences in Green's functions by uh, renormalization. Okay, and there are various renormalization schemes, and I have mentioned uh, three of them: MS, MS bar, and also on-shell uh, on shell renormalization. Okay, you can also have on off-shell renormalization. So, um, and we have also seen that our results may depend on, will depend on mu, okay, the Green's functions that we write. So let's try to understand what things change and what things do not change when you do a renormalization. Okay, so that's what I want to talk about in this, in this lecture. So let's first try to understand what we mean by a given theory. Okay. So let's suppose that an action is given to you, which is phi four action. This is the bare action or bare Lagrangian here in the square brackets. Or even more appropriately, bare Lagrangian density in four dimensions. So uh, let's go to D dimensions. where d is 4 minus 2 epsilon. Okay, let me not write it. I will introduce that when I uh, write the renormalized field. Okay, here lambda is dimension full. Okay, as you know, it has dimensions mu to the two epsilon. Okay, or or if you wish, you can introduce some mu naught and put lambda times mu naught power two epsilon. Okay, so um, let's keep epsilon fixed. Okay, I want to keep epsilon fixed because um, then things are finite. Okay, they become singular when epsilon goes to zero, but things are finite as epsilon is uh, fixed to some non-zero value. Okay, so given this action, and given these bare parameters, okay, now they are not not now they are not singular. Okay, they are singular only when epsilon goes to zero. So I fix epsilon, and the reason I am fixing epsilon is so that I don't run into this trouble of infinities. Everything is finite, but large because epsilon is not really zero. Uh, I mean, epsilon is not um, epsilon is somewhat close to four, uh, close to zero. So things are large, but not infinite because epsilon is some fixed number. Okay. So let's see uh, what we mean by saying that this gives us a theory. Okay. This is this specifies a theory, choosing some values of m square and m n lambda. Okay. So suppose I take this action or take this theory and find out what the physical mass is. Okay. So I figure out what the physical mass is from this theory. What will be the inputs? The inputs will be m and lambda, right? You choose some value of lambda, some value of m, and that will give you some value of mp, physical mass. Okay. Now, if you were to change the values of m and lambda, these bare parameters, if you were to change them, then the value of physical mass would change. Now you have a different theory. Okay. Suppose some values of some choice of m and, and m and lambda gives you particles in this theory which have mass one GeV. Okay. I'm just randomly saying some number. You can 
take other numbers also. But let's say some choice of m and lambda gives you particles in this theory which have mass equal to 1 GV, meaning mp is 1 GV. And if you were to change these values of m and lambda to some other new values, it could be that the new mass becomes now, uh, let's say, 15 GV. Now, this is a different theory, right? Because in the first theory, the particles had mass 1 GV, and in the second theory, the mass is 15 GV. The action looks the same, but the parameters that appear take different values. Okay, so changing these values will give you particles of different masses. So you are in a different theory. Okay, the same thing I could say in another way. Suppose you look at some cross section. So you are doing a scattering in some collider, and you collide, let's say, two particles to five particles, these scalar particles, and produce two final state particles. And you want to find out um, the, the cross section for this production, okay, that you can calculate in putting your chosen values of m and lambda, you'll get a certain prediction. And using that cross section, you can try to find out that if you were to uh, collide, let's say, a billion of billion such pairs, so billion of this and these particles, okay, input that into your calculation, so use cross section and this. Uh, this number of collisions okay, and multiplying them will give you the number of uh, events in which you are going to see these final state particles. Okay, Whatever you have kinematical configurations you have specified for these particles. Okay, According to that, you can find out the number of events that you are going to see when you collide, let's say, 1 billion of such pairs. Okay. Let's say you get 100. Let's say you are going to see 100 events in which these final states are produced okay, when you collide 1 billion such pairs of particles in the in state, in the incoming state. Okay? And that result is for some choice of m and lambda. Now you change the, change the values of these bare parameters m and bare parameter lambda to some other value, keeping epsilon fixed. I don't change epsilon, otherwise things become infinite. It becomes difficult to talk. So let's keep epsilon fixed. Let's pretend our world is not 4 dimensional, but 4 minus 2 epsilon dimensional. Now changing these values of m and lambda would change the cross section. Okay? Cross section has these um, modem squares, amplitude squares, okay? and which is what contains the dynamics. The remaining parts are just kinematical. Okay. So these numbers will change and maybe now you get instead of 100, let's say 500 events depending on what m and lambda you have chosen. So you get 500 events this time. Okay. So clearly that choice of m and lambda which gave you 100 events is describing a different theory than this one in which you get 500 events. Okay. So Changing these values of m and lambda will give you a different theory in which the predictions for physical masses, for the uh, for the number of events that are produced in a particular col in in, colli in particular collisions, they all will change. Okay, even though the form of the action is the same, but the parameters are different, and that results in different. Um, in different physical observables, okay, in different values of the physical observables. Okay, so uh, now what I'll do is we'll stick to one theory, okay, and by sticking to one theory means having a particular value of m and lambda, so that all the outcomes are fixed, okay. There is no ambiguity in. Uh, what you are going to get in a particular scattering or what you are going to get for the physical mass. They are all fixed now. Okay, So m and lambda are fixed, keeping epsilon fixed so that I don't run into the trouble of infinities. Okay, So now I want to see the effect of doing renormalization. Okay, What things change 
when I do a renormalization and renormalization and what uh, quantities do not change when I do a renormalization. Okay, and we will um, also come back to this discussion here uh, in a in a while. Okay, and you will see why I, I was talking about this. Okay, so let's first look at um, the S matrix elements. See, we have seen already that the Green's functions. Uh, they change. So Green's functions change when you do a renormalization because each field, uh, when it gets renormalized, picks up a factor of z phi or square root of z phi. So let me now look at the S matrix elements. What happens to them? And of course, I am going to keep the theory fixed. I'm not going to change the bare parameters m and lambda. Okay, they will not change. So S matrix element, you know, they are giving you the uh, the probability amplitude of a state with labels k1 to km. Okay, uh, transforming into a state with labels p1 to pn. And you would expect that um, this quantity would be um, a fixed, I mean, once it is given what theory you have, these probabilities would get fixed or these amplitudes will get fixed, right? So that's the expectation. So I expect that S should not change if I keep the bare parameters in the theory fixed okay and even if I change other things like renormalized parameters and renormalized uh, fields even if I change them but my bare parameters are fixed the theory should not change and these S matrix elements should not change and let's verify whether that is indeed the case so you recall how it is uh, given you can go back in the notes and you'll find that the expression is this. I'm writing it slightly differently compared to what I wrote earlier. I mean, it's not different, it's just minor reshuffle of the factors here and there. It was this. Okay, remember we had one factor of one over root z for each external leg. Okay, and that's why you have one over root z m plus n and you had these factors. MP is the physical mass. Times the Green's function, M plus N point Green's function, okay? Where G tilde is the Fourier transform. The tilde always denotes, denotes the Fourier transform. That's what we had seen, okay? And you also know that G tilde contains uh, the poles, okay? Coming from the propagators. Right? And what is left after pulling out those uh, contributions from the external leg corrections is the amputated Green's function. Okay? So clearly the S matrix element is the residue of these Green's functions. Okay? If you take the residue of this, so you, you know this has a pole, so take the residue of the pole, okay? that will give you the S matrix. Okay, so okay, it's, I should have written it slightly differently. Anyway, I can do it now. So let's write it like this. Um, minor modification. Okay, I'm just um, writing the incoming and outgoing parts separately. Okay, I'm just, just distributing these factors over uh, 
these products j equal to 1 to n times okay now um, recall what's the structure of two point function okay and that's relevant because the external legs they have the structure of two point function so let's recall what is a two point function and again i am writing everything in the bare theory okay this, there is nothing, uh, the, I'm not using the renormalized uh, Green's function, so this is g tilde, uh, calculated with the Bayer fields. So g tilde 2 was, we found that it is iz over p square minus mp square, okay? Where z I had introduced earlier, this z is not the wave function uh, renormalization constant that you have seen here, that I denote by z phi, okay? plus regular terms. Let me see if I can find out easily where that expression was. Okay, it's not in this file. Anyway, you can go back and see this expression. Okay, that's the structure we already know, that g tilde 2, that is the two-point function, has a pole at physical mass, so that is what is this denominator telling you. And the residue is i times z. And then you have other regular terms at p square equal to mp square. Okay. And also, when we use the renormalized fields, okay, then g tilde 2 See here, this is the correlator made out of this thing. Um, Can okay, you take the Fourier transform of this? Okay, but the fields are bare fields. That's the two-point function. But in this, for this one, it is constructed out of phi renormalized, and you take the Fourier transform, and that's what gives you. G g tilde 2, okay? And because phi is z tilde, this, I don't think I'm putting tilde, z phi, okay, to the half, so you see you get a factor of z phi here. Okay, so that is how the two-point function with bare fields, defined with bare fields, is related to the two-point function defined with the renormalized fields. So R is the subscript I use for um, indicating that I'm using renormalized fields here. Okay, so that's the relation. Also note that Z is a constant, okay? This uh, renormalization constant is really a constant. It does not depend on P, okay? So Z of phi does not depend on P. P or P square. So the pole structure here, see the, these, the left hand side is a function of P, the right hand side is a function of P, and this factor is a constant, does not carry any uh, P dependence. And I know that the left hand side has a pole at physical mass, so it, it has a form of 1 over P square minus MP square. Okay, so it's, it has a pole, and then it implies that. On the right hand side also, 
since this is the only factor which has p dependence this should have a pole at physical mass right so that the uh, so that it's the same function okay otherwise it cannot be that the left hand side has a pole at p equal to mc square and right side does not have because it has to be because left hand side is same as the right hand side okay so we should have poles on both the sides so it's clear that g tilde 2 defined with renormalized fields also has a pole at the physical mass okay let's look at the residue now so for that i'll do i'll just uh, write the expression close to the uh, p square equal to mp square okay so the left hand side is 1 over p square minus mp square i times z okay i'm just looking at the pole terms and what do you have on the right hand side you have a z phi this factor and then i have argued that this has a pole this has the same pole so it should have i times some residue let's call it um what i'm calling it r okay the residue is r divided by p square minus m physical square okay where r is the residue um for uh, is the residue which you get here so this is the two point function okay and here the fields are renormalized fields so as i wrote earlier this is just the fourier transform of this okay and and renormalized parameters this is this object so when you uh, calculate this you know that that's going to give you a pole at the physical mass and it will have some residue and whatever residue that you are going to get i am denoting by r or, or rather i times r okay so from here you can see that z is z phi times r okay or the residue that you are going to get in the renormalized theory is z over z phi and of course um, if you choose a um, renormalization scheme such that this r is 1 and right? you can choose such a renormalization scheme so that you get we have already uh, done that before let's see here here so with these choices um, yeah so we had demanded that we want to put a uh, 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 we want to use a scheme such that the propagator comes out to be i over p square minus mp square okay so that the residue is one and then you can find out what conditions you have to impose okay so this is what we have done here so you could do you could ask for that and if you ask for such a condition to be satisfied that r should come out to be one okay then z is same as z phi okay or the wave function uh renormalization constant z phi is same as the z which we had introduced earlier okay but in general if you are not using such a scheme you will have a, a residue r which will be different from 1 and it will be related to uh, z phi and z by this relation or this relation okay so now let's see what happens to the s matrix element given that we know how um, how the residue changes when you change uh, when you do a renormalization so we see that s matrix element okay and this i am writing with in the in the 
uh, using the bare quantities. Okay. So my my understanding is that x s matrix elements are physical observables. Okay, these are physical quantities because you are uh, you are talking about what is the probability amplitude of a state with uh, with these labels k1 to km appearing as another state. Okay, uh, with labels this p1 to pm. Okay, and it should not change. And uh, let's see what what it gives us. So I have product i equal to one to m minus i over two pi three halves one over square root of z. Okay, k i square minus m p square. Um, yeah, sorry. So. Let's go here. So here, um, okay. Let me let me write it. It it will take little while to write, but it will be it will be better to do this way. Let me write it again. I'm just writing the same thing again. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll put this result that Z is Z five times R. So here I'll put uh, z phi times r. So you'll get a root r here, one over root r here, okay, and a one over root z phi, okay. And remember, I'm not, um, I'm still writing the same same S matrix element, okay. This is still in the uh, Baer theory, okay. I'm just replacing this, and g tilde. Uh, g tilde uh, g tilde m plus n. This is just like what you have here with two fields. This is an object constructed out of m plus n fields. Okay, and each field, when you uh, turn to renormalized field, will give you a factor of uh, root z. Okay, uh, so, uh, root z of phi. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that. Um, G tilde is the okay, this has stopped working for some strange reason. For some strange re reason, it's okay. Fourier transform of just a second. Let me see why it's not working. So it's a Fourier transform of. Such m plus n fields, okay. And when I write this as um, correlation function with phi r, here I will have z phi m plus n, okay. So root z phi m plus n, okay. So here, if I replace this factor, this will have root z of phi. M plus n, g tilde, m plus n, but the renormalized one. Okay, and you have seen here already that you get uh, um, one over square root of r. Okay, and then you have yeah uh, root z of phi in the denominator. Okay. So root z of phi in the denominator and root um, r in the denominator, and there are m such factors here and n such factors here. So together they will give you uh, root z phi m plus n in the denominator from here, and you have root z phi to the m plus n 
in the numerator coming from this part. So the same expression, okay, I can write as the following. One over r square root of r. Okay, where square root of uh, where r is the residue when you which you get when you used. Okay, again not writing. When you used renormalized uh, fields and renormalized parameters. Okay, this is getting hopeless. Okay, let me pause. Okay, so n minus i over two pi three half one over square root of r minus m p square times g tilde r. Okay, this is with the renormalized field. So you see whether you use um, the renormalized perturbation theory, renormalized fields and parameters, and then calculate g tilde with the renormalized fields, okay, and put the residue that you get in uh, in the renormalized theory, that one, okay, or you work with the unrenormalized uh, fields and parameters, you get the same result, okay, which is good because that is something. Uh, uh, we should expect because S is a physical quantity, right? It's uh, telling you the uh, these probabilities of transitioning from here to there, and that should not that should be fixed once you fix the theory. Okay, and the theory gets fixed when when you fix the uh, bare couplings and um, uh, bare uh, bare mass parameters. Okay, so this is um, good. Let me write this in words. S matrix elements do not change whether we evaluate okay, lots of difficulties today. Whether we evaluate them using bare quantities or renormalized quantities. By quantities, I mean fields and parameters. Okay. So um, that's about um, asymmetric elements. Let us look at Green's functions. Um, 